Welcome to CW 5.1. Today we're going to be talking about exponential functions. So first we'll just highlight exponential function there. So for this first one, let's plot some points down. You should know 0, 1, and then 1, 2, and 2, 4. So notice how this first half is kind of like a parabola. And the other half is going to go into fractions. So negative 1, 1 half negative two quarter and this thing is going to curve off like that and there'll be a nice asymptote right there that'll be y equals zero now if you're wondering why this is that's because if you're raising two to some power any number you plug in right here like let's say you plug in negative 10 all it'll do is make it one over two to the 10th, which means I'll just keep making a smaller positive number. So this thing is just gonna keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's gonna slowly approach zero forever, which means our domain we can see is everything, but our range is gonna be zero, not inclusive to infinity. For the next graph, we see one half to the X, it might be helpful to think of this as 2 to the negative x, since 1 half is equal to 2 to the negative 1. Because that would mean I'm going to take this graph right here, and I'm going to reflect it over the y-axis. So it should look something like this. And again, you're going to put your asymptote right there. For domain and range, it's going to be pretty similar. Domain is everything, and the range is 0 to infinity. Now here's our last one. The first thing you want to recognize is right here, that's your parent graph, 2 to the x. Then I can see it's going to move left 2 and down 1. So you can imagine the original, 0, 1, 1, 2, like that. And then here's your asymptote. If I can make it a little bit cleaner. And all we're going to do is grab this whole thing and move it left 2, down 1. So one, two, one. And there's a new graph. So we'll do domain range, I'll do that right over here. Domain, range. So you should be noticing domain is always everything. And the range is simply from the asymptote and above. So in this case, it would be negative one to infinity. A couple of things you might have also noticed is that this number right here on the other part, do that in blue, that's actually your HA value. So that's a little tip as you're graphing. So right here, those are our standard exponential graphs. The two points you really want to highlight are going to be this point and this point. I call those the parent points, and those are going to be, I'll put that right here, 0, 1, and 1, comma base. Those will be your standard points you want to use. So take some time just to write those down. That's parent points for exponential function. Let's go to some word problems here. A scientist puts three microbes in a petri dish. Each microbe will split into two microbes every minute. Write a function. So to understand this, it might be helpful to think of a table. X, Y, 
This is like saying at zero minutes, so x is time, there should be three microbes, so that's what we're starting with, and every minute it'll double. So at one it's six, at two it's 12, at three it's 24. The easiest way to do this is think of the exponential form, y equals a times b to the x, where this a, you're going to think of that as your initial value. And then b, that's going to be your percent growth or decay. So for this problem, let's plug it in. y equals the initial value is 3. The growth is you're multiplying by 2. So let's put 2, and then we'll put 2 to the x power. Next one, it says determine a formula. So we're once again going to use this setup I gave you right here. Here's my initial value. So f of x should equal 4. And notice how it's 216 right here. So I can see that 4 to 16 in two steps. It must have been 1, 8 in between, since it fits the pattern, which meant we're timesing y by 2 every time. So we're going to write 4 times 2 to the x. Now that's one way to do it. The other way, if you didn't like just like thinking about it, let's plug in a b right here. And we're going to plug in this point. So 16 should equal 4 times b to the second power. So 4 should equal b squared. And b is going to be plus minus 2. But we know negative 2 doesn't work, so it simply cross out negative 2. So now we'll put it back. That must have been 2. And we'll do the same thing over here. y is equal to, there's my initial, b to the x power. I'm going to plug in 8, negative 1. So 4 is equal to b, negative 1. So b must have been a quarter. Erase that. 1 quarter. OK, let's try one more. It says 5 grams of a certain bacteria is present in a Petri dish. It multiplies at a rate of 5% every 10 minutes. Write a function. So very similar, you're going to write y is equal to 5. Now this is the hard part. Whenever you're dealing with this percent increase, this thing right here, you have to understand that you need to put a 1 first. So it's going to be 1, and in this case, plus 5%. And that's going to be your t, meaning the function is 5 times 1.05 to the t. And this 1 right here, the reason you have that is that's accounting for itself. So you do need to have that there. So in short, you can think of this part as 1 plus or minus the percent, and that's your growth slash decay. So for example, Let's say it asked for a 5% decay. You would write y is equal to 5 times 0.95 to the t. And 0.95 because you do 1 minus 0 0.05, meaning you'd have 95% of it left. That's what you would do in, in the event it asked for a 5% decay. Okay, so that's it for the lesson. Let me know if you have any questions.